Welcome back to the Shifting Schools podcast. We are diving in to AI, uh, looking at uh, ChatGPT, all these new AIs that have come out. They're taking education by storm here in the year 23, 24 school year. Uh, I'm excited today to be joined by uh, Terry Kearns, all the way from Vietnam. Uh, it's great to be here. Thank you for waking up early this morning to join <laughs> us on the podcast to do a little recording here. Uh, just real quick, we can talk about, uh, you're an elementary ed teacher. Talk a little bit about your classroom here this morning as you get up. How do you run your classroom? What are you looking at? Grade levels you teach, that kind of thing. So I teach grade four. Um, how do I run my classroom? That's a good one. Um, I don't know. How do I answer that? Project-based, um, integrated oh, approach. See. Like, what's your thing? I gotcha. Um, we are standards-based and okay. uh, we're using the Common Core uh, to we build what's called at our school power standards and target standards. So okay. we're, we're a standards based school and um, we build project based in there and, and a little bit of inquiry in there as well. And we have what's called four super units throughout the year. So we are now week at the end of week four uh, next week, we're off tomorrow or today. It's now the morning oh, nice. um, into week five next week of our uh, first pro first unit called independent me where the students, the final project, the students will do what's uh, a Ted talk grade. Uh, we're calling it grade four, grade four talks. And it's like a Ted oh, talk cool. style chat in oh, front about, cool. uh, about healthy choices. So we are um, right now in, t in the writing, just starting to research phase of that. Um, and one of the options is actually AI for the kids. So talk about that. What, what do you mean options for AI? Like they can write about AI, they can use AI. What it's, it's about choices. So they've got, um, they can talk about, um, uh, sports, screen time, hmm. bullying, um, digital citizenship. And one of them is AI, the use of AI, um, oh, and cool. where they're taking it's interesting. Um, when I introduced it, I thought it was like the use of the tools in the classroom. And we had a guest speaker and he brought in the use of AI in medicine just to introduce AI to the, to the kids. Very cool. And they've taken it the, the, from what I've heard. They're just, they just started to choose their topics yeah. yesterday and the day before. And some of the kids are saying like AI is good for humanity or it's not good for humanity. So they've taken it a lot bigger than, than what I introduced it as, which is fantastic. That is awesome. Talk a little bit about your journey with AI. Why did you start digging into this? Like, what was it about AI that you're like, this is something that I think I need to know about. And then how's this going to actually apply to my classroom? So I remember as I, as it was coming out, people just talking about it and a friend, um, introduced me to, I think he had chat GPT four on his phone, okay. uh, which is not here. You have to get a, you have to, send a phone number from, from the West to get it. And he oh, was, so geez. he was sharing like how he used it. He actually showed me how he wrote a song and the song <laughs> was hilarious. Yeah. And then he told me he was using it for like, um, modeling for the kids. Like oh, cool. they were doing a reflection of some sort, a six word reflection or a six sentence reflection or I can't remember. And he showed me how quick it was. And I was like, Oh, okay. That's <laughs> neat. Um, because I've spent many of hours trying to come up with, you know, the student example, the, yeah. Um, to use with the kids or, or build it with the kids. And it was just instantaneous. I was like, oh, and again, it was funny the one he showed. Um, yeah. So I thought, oh, I, I, I'll give that a go. And I used it for examples. And then, I, so in, in Vietnam, we have one, something called Po, we can use Po.com. And it's a it's an amalgamation of a, a bunch of them, chat, chat GPTs on there, Claude, cool. um, another one. And so I started playing around with that and then realizing I could use it um, for examples for the kids. And then I realized I could, it would help me with planning. And um, it just, I don't use it. People always say like, oh, you just put your plan in and you're done. And I was like, not really. You can not still really. Have to, yeah, it's, it spits out pretty boring stuff. Yeah. So you, I, but it, it helps me as a checklist for when I'm like, oh, okay, I'm making a lesson and I, uh, the objective is this. 
what do you got? Oh, okay. I forgot to ask for the pre-knowledge or I forgot to do a, an exit yeah. ticket or something. So I just started using it like that. And then I was asking it for vocabulary or something. I thought like a vocabulary list for your kids or something. No, just for like learning, like learning a new word or just okay. what, what's that mean? Or what can I, and uh, the kids can do this. And then, um, at our school, um, our tech coach, uh, Denai Marumba, he came to me, he knew I was kind of playing around with it. And he came to me with, um, Codebreaker EDU's uh, Byte software. Okay. And he said, it's great for the kids. And he goes, I know you're playing with it. So why don't, why don't you give it a go? And we were in the middle of a, a, a novel study. And I thought, yeah, vocabulary, kids, let's go and give it a go. <laughs> and it, it, I just was playing around, honestly, let's, let's give it a go. And um, knowing that uh, Denai had my back and he said it was all good to go, we went with it. That's pretty cool. So talk about that a little bit. What did the kids do with that? What was the, what was kind of the outcome of having kids play with the AIs? Um, it started off again with my friend showing me, he, I think he showed me a song and I showed the kid, they, I asked the kids at the end of the day, on, at the end of the week, I said, let's, cause they were all talking about it. I had one student in particular who was nonstop talking about chat GPT, <laughs> chat GPT. I can, I can cheat. I can do this. I can do that. Yeah. 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 You don't, you don't need to teach me anymore in, in a great way. Like he's, he's funny. Yeah. Kid. Yeah. Um, and I thought, okay, fine, let's let's play with it. And then I kind of, I played with it in real time in the back. And then um, we did a something, and I said, like, give me some topics. Um, and they were like, oh, make it write a poem about a marshmallow that that was in love but fell out of love in, <laughs> a, around a fire. And I was like, okay. And it wrote this funny poem. Typical about, fourth grade. You're just like, what in the world are I'm you? Like, what are you throwing out marshmallows? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, what? Why? Why? And it wrote it wrote a pretty funny poem about a yeah. marshmallow that got burned. Like it was pretty <laughs> funny. So, um, yeah, it just went from that. It started with that, and then we have golden time, as many schools do at the yeah. end of the week, like 15, 20 minutes. And I, I said to my team, I said, like, you know what? I'm going to take some kids. We've got uh, the, the the side room or whatever. Come on over, and we'll we'll just we'll just play with it. Um, yeah. and I, I did like some little small presentation and then they just wanted to make poems and, and write stuff. And we had a great time. That's great. Just playing that's with stuff. Great. And that's how, that's how the journey started. And then, and then did I showed me the, the code breaker, uh, app and I showed the kids, um, how to, how to prompt to get what they wanted for mm. started with vocabulary. And then it moved in towards taking text that you're, when you're researching to, um, change it to the language level that you're at so that they don't have to take time um, decoding because when you're researching the, the the objective is not for the kids to like work on their reading. It's to you right. know, get that information and move on. And so they started, it was at the end of the year last year. So um, we started to get into that and that's kind of where it went. I love that. And I love this idea because I think this is one of the things that is such a low hanging fruit for educators, but has such a, a massive outcome. I'm doing it in all my trainings now. But this idea that when kids are doing research at whatever grade level, like fourth grade, fifth grade, it doesn't matter the grade level. If they're doing research and they're having a hard, difficult time or hard time comprehending something that they found for the research, you can copy and paste it in and say, can you put this at a fourth grade reading level? Can you put this at a second grade reading level? Like whatever the comprehension is that I need in order to actually understand the concept, right? The idea, and this is the thing I love, is it's lowering that barrier because I want students to understand the concept. We're not worried about them reading at a fourth grade level right now. I need them to understand concepts. And if that means that they have to understand it at a second grade level, that's okay. I need them to understand concepts. And when you have a tool like ChatGPT or name any of these tools, that will instantly be able to like within 10 or 15 seconds, rewrite anything at a level that a student can comprehend. That's a game changer when we talk about differentiation in the classroom. Yeah. And we have a lot of, um, uh, a lot of second language learners or, or multi, uh, multi language learners, and it just levels the playing field for everybody. And the other thing it does that I like is it gives kids ownership on their, their learning. So, uh, we have our F and P reading tests coming up soon and I'll let the kids know their level and we'll talk about it so that when they put it into Poe or not Poe, they don't use Poe. Um, when they put it into, to bite, they'll say like, I'm uh, please put it in at this level or mm. they, they can go above or below whatever they want. And then they're in charge of it instead of like, here's a test. I'm not telling you what, what it said. It's here. It yeah. is. Um, I love so that. it's great. So the websites you're using the Poe is at PO.com or is it? Po yeah. P O E.com. 
poe.com and is that yeah. one specifically for vietnam or is that something being used in asia or you know what i'm not mean? sure um okay. it's, it's yeah i haven't heard it's, of it so i'm just asking i haven't heard of that one yeah no it, i actually used it for one of your questions <laughs> <laughs> you of cheater course. you they, yeah man <laughs> i'm not gonna read it exactly uh, yeah but, that's great though yes. i love it <laughs> I thought, mm, what's and that, what okay. was the other one you said bite uh bite it's um codebreaker dot uh, codebreaker edu um, okay. Let me get let me get it correct. Uh, CodebreakerEDU.com is the site, and then um, if you go to Byte B Y T E, that's the the bot that they've created for kids, and it's great because it doesn't ask for an email. Uh, okay. So the kids go in and out, and so for elementary kids, you don't have to sign in because ChatGPT is 13 and over, but kids can use Byte. Yeah. And, and they put guardrails around it, so like you can't. It doesn't give you stupid stuff and. Yeah, so it's. I noticed they've updated it. Of course, it's changed since uh, yeah. since the end of last year. My kids this year, we, we're going to probably start with AI soon. But um, of course, kids being kids, um, exploring at the end of the day, they started writing in like something cheeky, like you're <laughs> stupid or you're. Yeah, of course. And, and, and but funny enough, like not terrible language, but just like yeah. you're dumb. And Byte would kept going back, like that's not polite. I'm a. I'm not going to. I, you give you responses. Yeah, I'm not going to respond if you're going to treat me like that. And it kept doing this. Like, if you see, I'm not going to help. Yeah. Um, but I, I just checked it because I'm, I'm doing something on Tuesday with with the teachers. And I, I tested that because I wanted to show them. And it just kept repeating that it was a language model. It, it kept apologizing, yeah. which I was like, ah, kind of, it's too bad. Um, again, yeah, when it's I better if it too, says, yeah, I like that. Maybe we could say, like, you shouldn't use language like that, or it's not good to be mean, or, you know, yeah, yeah. it's an SEL moment. Come on, build that in. <laughs> yep. And I tried it with, like, bad language and stuff, and it was it was great. Uh, it, oh, it that's stopped good. It and, and no, it was fine. And, no, and no cookies that follow them around. So it was good. Yeah. That's good. I like that. That's a, that's a great one for me. Uh, it's again, this is the problem. There, There's, like, a new AI every year. I keep telling, every day, I keep telling teachers, I was like, do you remember like a few years ago when it, when somebody you would say, I want I want my phone to do this, and everybody would say, there's an app for that. Yeah. I feel like instead of there's an app for that, it's there's an AI for that. I'll have teachers say, do you is there something that does this? I'll be like, there's an app for that. Is there something that does this? There's an app for that. But now it's an AI. There's an AI for that. There's an AI for that. <laughs> I, I'm like uh, I'm a little bit worried. That, not worried. Like um, the, what I'm talking about, I used like a couple of months ago. Is like all obsolete at this point. Yeah, <laughs> right. Changed so quickly. Yeah. So talk a little bit then. You started using this codebreakedu.com and then it's the Byte bot. And I'm going to go check that out as soon as we have done. And of course, all this will be in the show notes for those of you listening. I'll make sure I get all these links right in the show notes. So you've have so you're having kids then use this. Are you using it in the writing process? Are kids using it to pre-write, to bounce ideas off of? Can you maybe talk about like how are kids maybe using this in your classroom? So right now, it, we're, I'm, I'll, I will be introducing it uh, in a probably next week or the week after, but okay. going back, we used it for, oh, we used it for ideation actually at the end of last year, cool. um, coming up with ideas. I think, um, in, we, we did an activity where it was like, uh, there's four of them. You come up with characters of, of based on people, you know, a setting where you've been a problem that you've had, uh, and then the kids would work together and then they'd, they'd come up with a, here's an outline of a story or they wrote the story and it was pretty funny. So then I would show them like, if you take those and you put them into into Poe um, yeah. or anything, it comes up with yeah. a story. So we we did that to sh just show the kids, and they're like, "Wow!" And it was yeah. like, "There's, there's," and I, again, at the end of the year, we were getting towards the the practice of like, um, put it in and see what it does, and see how it compares to what what you wrote, and what how mm. can it help you because. I would put in some of the rubric parameters as well. Sure. So like write a, write a story that, you know, um, uh, uses punctuation in a correct way. I can't remember exactly what that rubric was. And then it, it put it, it sent it back out and the kids could see, or you could put it in with the mistakes and the kids find mm -hmm. it. That was, that was powerful too. Um, and the kids would laugh because, Oh, it didn't use capitals. And it's like, I told yeah. it not to. Um, yeah, right. Or, or I would use it with the mistakes that they were making or the misconceptions they have. And I would put that in on my prompt. And it would come out, and the kids would be like, "Oh yeah, yeah." And I was like, "Well, that's that's you. That's, oh, that's what you're cool. doing." Um, so they could they could um, look at it critically as well. So we used that at the beginning of the process. That's really cool. I had a teacher in one of my trainings um, earlier this week 
who was wondering if it would, and this was, I thought this was kind of cool, like this idea in the elementary classroom where uh, if you were working on adjectives or adverbs or nouns or verbs or parts of speech, she asked it, she copied and pasted some text into it and then said, could you just bold all the adjectives? And sure enough, it just takes the same thing and it just spits it out, but it's bold all the adjectives. That's and good. she goes, this is perfect for my kids because then you could go in and look at art. Did it get it right? Like, are That's these good. all really adjectives? And then did you use the same adjective, you know, five times? Did you use did you different adjectives? Yeah, did yeah, you yeah. use, you know, same thing with verbs? Like, did you repeat your verb? Like, did you only use two verbs? How could you change a verb? Because it did the highlighting for you. Writing that down. <laughs> I know. Isn't that a cool? And I was like, oh, I never even thought about that as a way of kids to copy and paste in their stuff and then say, because we're working on nouns or we're working on. And the first one is, did it get it right? And I think that's the first question we ask kids every time we're playing with these. And that's even us as adults. The first question you ask yourself is, did it get it right? Because yes. sometimes it didn't. And that could be a problem with the prompt. That could be a problem with these AI bots aren't perfect. Um, but I thought that was a really cool way that I could see it used in elementary classrooms when we're practicing parts of speech or word recognition or, uh, you know, change all the adverbs to, and kids of course would be cool, you know, change all the adverbs into the word monkey or something. And then it would just, you know, they could, you know how kids are, they'll play with it. But again, it's it all better. part of that learning process. Right. And yeah. And so like, I think, and I know one of the biggest fears is that they're going to copy and paste, right? Yeah. So that was a conversation pretty much right away about, and we were lucky at the time we, we had taught the kids paraphrasing. So mm. my students had the skill of paraphrasing and they knew it and they, they do it. And I, I, to, I told them like, you can't copy and paste. That's because yeah. A, you may not have read it. B, it might not be your voice. C, it's not at our school. One of the core values is, you know, academic excellence. Yeah. That's not being honest. So we went over that. And so they, you would hear my kids like, don't copy, don't copy, don't, or, don't copy, don't copy. Don't copy. <laughs> you, they're quick with the hotkeys and all that. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. that was a big one. And so for that sort of stuff, it, it's great. And I, yeah. I think and as you were speaking to that, I think at the end of the year, some of the kids were putting some of their work into it for editing purposes. Like, yeah. am I missing it? Can you make this better? Is this, but I told them like, or we not told them, um, we talked about how like, when you put it in, it's all about the prompt. It's not yep. like make this better, like make what right. better. Can you, yeah, so they, exactly. my kids were checking it for like, do I have all like my, my, do I have periods or my sentences run ons? So they knew what they're looking for. And I, and I, I thought that was fine. That was excellent. And yeah, they could talk to I, it. I think that is, you know, as we continue to go down this road, I think that's a huge, to me, that's the skill, right? You can't just say, make this better. You have to say, make this better by using better adjectives or better adverbs or better, whatever better is that you're trying to improve. And I think that by itself, because one of the things we're getting, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, but you know, this idea of like, well, kids are just going to copy and paste and cheat. Kids are just going to copy, paste and cheat. And I'm like, well, yes, but that's an academic integrity thing that we've been working on forever. And it's not just AI. They were copying and pasting off of any website they went to anyways. Like it just copy and paste is copy paste. We still have to have those conversations around this. How do you paraphrase? What a great, what a great lesson to have, right? Um, but I think this idea of, uh, I don't know where I was going now. Never mind. Uh, but I just, I don't know. I think there's so much. Oh, I know what I was going with. I think the idea of supporting kids and understanding how do you prompt it is an essential critical skill. When we talk about critical thinking, that is critical thinking. There's critical thinking in the prompt. And one of the things, I'd love to run this past you because we haven't talked before. Mm. So I want to run this past you and get your, get your heads off and get there ready. What happens if we can assess critical thinking, we can assess knowledge, we can assess the concept by assessing the prompts kids use of course. to create the whatever it does on the other end. Like, could you take the prompt and ask kids, what prompt would you give to get this output? And based on what prompts they were giving, you can look at that prompt and say, oh, this kid understands adjectives, adverbs, part of speech, character development, theme, whatever it happens. Don't worry about what the output is. I don't care what the output is. I want to know, can you prompt the sucker? Because I can, I, I feel like I could assess in their knowledge based on the prompt. I take it even one step further. I 100% I, I agree. Yeah, you could, but I would take it further and I'd get the kids to write that prompt. You could conference with them or what, what have you. Yeah. And then get the response and then have yeah. the kids um, judge whether the response was what they wanted because there are the, as I tell the kids, you're the, you're the learner. Right. Right. So did you learn from this? 
Yeah. And if they didn't, then there's your conversation and there's, yeah. the, there's the question. So yeah. put it back on the kids because yeah, but yeah, that would totally. And work. if you didn't get what you wanted, how do you update Why? your prompt? What right. You That's the yeah. critical thinking. Like, did you have to, you have to use, do you have to use different words? Do you have to be more specific? And this is the thing that we talk about is like you get into a point where you start creating, we call them mega prompts. And I don't know if anybody else calls them that, but we, that's what we call them over here at Shifting Schools, right? Like we have kids, like these prompts start to get, they're like a paragraph by the time you're done. Like a mega prompt can yeah. be, I because you need to be, if you want something really good on the output, your input is more than a sentence. It's more than oh, yeah. make it better, right? It And we call them mega prompts. Like how do we support kids in creating a mega prompt? that gives you exactly, and it won't be exactly, it's never going to be a hundred percent. And I want kids to know that, but it's going to get pretty close to where I'm making edits and I've got something that I can actually use. Yeah, no, absolutely. Cause you got to workshop it. You got to keep put input, output, input, output until you get yeah. what you want. And it takes, uh, my kids went through that, that phase in, in my introduction to prompting with them. We did it together. Uh, just showing them, um, one of the words, uh, I can't remember what the word was, but I was like, define, uh, what was one of them? Actually, I remember just because it was one to find the yeah. word quail and mm. we, we purposely chose it because the standard was uh, defining words that have multiple meanings. Ooh, okay. I didn't even know quail had two meanings. <laughs> so <at the> time, <laughs> I thought it was just a bird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I put it in a uh, sh- shout out to my Yale teacher, Melvin. Um, so he, he, uh, I put it in and it come, came out with like this really long um, response. And I showed the kids like, can you, I said, do you understand that? And they're all like, First of all, they didn't want to read it because it was too long. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. then how to, you know, finesse the prompt and then off they went and gave it a go. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah. My kids were all about, uh, I'm a 10 year old, um, uh, explain <laughs> this to me as a 10 year old. Yeah. Uh, how would you define blah, blah, blah for a 10 year old? Oh, I love that. It's great prompting. It's great. Yeah. Prompting. That's where, we, you where we're going. Doing, yeah. You're doing some, you're doing some trainings with teachers and stuff. What is some of the things that you're trying to support teachers around in understanding this as far as what well, kids will just use it to cheat or we shouldn't, we don't have to be teaching kids this stuff or should we be teaching kids this stuff? What's kind of, what's some of the conversations you're having at your school and that you're even hearing maybe in Twitter and some of the other social, social areas as well. You know what it is? I think it's more like the losing the fear of it. Like, Mm. To, actually, to, the best way to, to approach it, and a lot of it is like showing them the tools that saves them time. Yeah. Um, again, using the models like that you need for the kids. Like you, you don't need to sit at home and write a five paragraph essay that has yeah. the parts of the rubric that you're looking for. Boom! It literally takes you your prompt. Um, uh, report cards is another one. Um, emailing. Oh, that's another one. To, uh, sending an email or a seesaw post or, or however you're communicating with parents and, and stuff. It's just bang done. Like that stuff's. I would like to think that's going to cut, be cut down. Your time's going to be cut down yeah. exponentially. Um, and I'm answering one of your questions that you sent me earlier. Um, yeah. so you have more time to be with the kids, like I love n- that. number one. So you don't, you're not behind your computer crafting an email to a parent about A, B and C you put it in. No, change that and done five minutes. Maybe yeah. instead of sometimes, you know, parent emails can take 20 minutes because you're crafting yeah. it. You want to sound blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, you have to rewrite it three times because it doesn't sound right. You want to make sure it's all sound, you know, exactly. It's got to sound like me and, and that's great. That's yeah, all yeah. part of it. Um, and that's what we teach kids. Um, yeah. As far as the, the cheating thing, I come from it. I, a wise man to me once said like banning thing doesn't banning things don't, doesn't teach anybody anything. So, you know, the kids are using it. My kids came to me. Yeah. I, the reason I started is because my kids, one in particular was talking about it all the time. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? He's talking about it. They're all, they're all, curious yeah. and we just gave it a go and off it went so yeah. just you know saying like we're, we've got to show them I, and coming from an elementary perspective i think if we show them um from the beginning the ethical use and how to use it you know kids will be kids they're going to cheat everybody's going to cheat um yeah. but they we had a, a, a student panel at the beginning of the year uh, at our school in front of the whole faculty and we had a, mm. kids from grade five middle school and high school and uh, our head of school asked them about use, what's their, what about AI in their learning? And all of them yeah. asked, how do we use it? Um, we know that it, like you can cheat, but like, we don't know how to use it effectively right for way. our learning. The yeah. right way. That, all, that was the message. And it was like, yeah, of course, they, they just want to know how to, how to use it. So they, yeah. they don't get, in, quote unquote, in trouble. And it was yeah. like, especially the high school I find kids. the same way. And, and this becomes the issue that I have is schools are saying, well, kids will just use it to cheat. And my first question is, but do they know that it's cheating? 
I mean, because you're, you're dealing with a generation who everything is copy and pasteable. And yeah. if we're not teaching what is cheating or is this cheating, I mean, we've got to a place where copying and pasting off a website, most kids know by middle school, high school, you can't just copy and paste things off a website, put it in your paper. That's considered cheating. But this is a whole new tool that makes stuff up. Is that cheating? And, and kids are going to be asking themselves questions. And if they don't know what the rules are around it, I, I could totally see a group of kids saying like, we know we can do this. We don't know if we should. And then please somebody show us what's the right way to do it so that we can utilize this in a way that we can write better emails and write better, whatever, you know, just write better Yeah, <laughs> because that's what it, that's what it's here. That's what it's here to do. And also it, it, it puts it back on us teachers. What, what kind of environment are we creating where kids feel they have to cheat, right? That's yes. bigger. That, oh. That's never going to go away. But love it, so we, you know, what are we doing? So we got to help them out. I love that. I love that. All right. Well, thank you for being here with me today, Terry. As we get ready to wrap up, we are going to do a fire round. This is something that uh, Trisha and I are trying with this whole uh, AI stuff coming up. We've got people at all different levels, you being at elementary. We've got all kinds of interviews coming up here. And so we wanted to ask everybody the five same questions and kind of do a fire round. Uh, so uh, here we go. We'll get started and just see uh, how you answer these questions. And some of them might be things we've already talked about, which is totally fine too. All right. So question one, number one, what do you think generative AI means for the future of education? Uh, I, what I think it means, I told my kids yesterday, I think that it's going to be, for, from, for their perspective, they're going to have their own individualized tutor that knows mm. them exactly, that will be instantaneous, that knows all their strengths and all their areas of need. And the more that the students uh, feed that bot uh, and the more information it gathers, the quicker it can help them and differentiate to them and directly. Them, right? And it'll, it'll grow, grow with, them. with them. Exactly. Oh, so that's right where I there. see it going uh, from their perspective. Awesome. Explain one application you have already engaged with and explain as though you are speaking to someone who has never used that generative AI tool. Yeah, that's the one I asked. <laughs> um, awesome. So I use Poe. Um, and it's just like a virtual assistant that can help you do anything that, that, that you can basically talk to that can plan strategies, can write your emails. Um, that's like, it gives you human, human responses, human type responses can get, go a little too far sometimes <laughs> with those responses, but, um, yeah. it explains, it suggests, it researches, it problem solves. Um, it's a sounding board. Um, it's not as powerful as chat GPT in that it, um, gives you some of the uh the documents and stuff but it's mm. it's just a it's a virtual assistant who takes care of all the, the quick needs so you can get the answer and get away i love that po poe.com we'll make sure that it's in the show notes as well all right next one what is an unknown for you that keeps you up at night when you think about generative ai and all this stuff in the future of education i don't know if it's an unknown but i i guess it is um going back to the personal bots i worry that Parents will be like, well, that's enough. No need for you <laughs> teachers anymore. Yeah. Um, because all of this stuff that we're talking about is just a critical, it's a, it's a tool for critical yeah. thinking. Yeah. And you can't replace relationships. You can build a relationship all you want with your computer and with, with the AI, and it's going to get very good. Um, yeah. It, it, so, but it's not going to be the same as a human. So my, my worry is that we'll be replaced by bots, mm. <laughs> as, as I'm sure it is with everybody else. Yeah. Right. There was many. I what do you, what do you wish more educators were talking about when it comes to AI? Um, the, what, kind of what we talked about earlier. Um, how it can help students learn. How it can individualize mm -hmm. learning to the student. Um, and from us, uh, yeah. save time. It just absolutely yeah. can save you time. On not again, you can spend your time on things that that you want to get better at as a, as a professional. And sure, yeah. you, if you were an email writer and you love crafting your, your writing your writing craft. You, have at it, but there's yeah. other parts of your our job that you you know I don't want to do this right now. You don't like it's doing not, it. <laughs> it's not <laughs> your it takes passion. Too long. Yeah, there you go. Don't, <laughs> it's not it just takes a long. You can. It's yeah. there, and and it's more time to be with the kids and working with I them and their, and their needs. I love that. Last one. Share one antidote where you realize generative AI is con is connected to human skills. We talked about it earlier. Prompting. It's prompting. what goes in comes out. So it's it's mm. the the prompting. The the you can't go in the students can't go in without knowing what they're looking for. And that even can be the, the, the standard, even if they know how to copy the standard or the, in our, our case, the I can statement and spit it back up. 
if they're copying that without knowing what they're looking for, it's just so obvious. You can just spot it and you can talk to them about it. So prompting mm. would be just the human skill. I love that. I love that. Uh, thank you for that rapid fire round. Those are great, uh, great ideas. I, I like this idea. Um, if people wanted to reach out and follow you and see the stuff that you're doing with your kids, uh, where's the best place for them to do that at? Oh, I'm on my, my old Twitter. Um, oh, sorry. X. Twitter slash X. <laughs> Twitter slash X. Yeah. It's, it's Terry K teacher at Terry K teacher. Um, I, I use it specifically for my, my AI journey, um, which I'll, I'll be putting this on about, cool. um, yeah, I'm using it for that. And I just, it's slow. It's, I'm at the, actually, I'm, it's part of my, my journey, uh, it's professional development journey. So it's like, it's just in the very beginning stages. So awesome. anytime I use it, I, I post what I've done, or if I hear something, I'll, I'll, I've, I'll put it there. Uh, yeah. I'm still learning how to use it myself. Uh, I didn't use it before. So. Yeah. It's interesting. And, and, I, I, use, and I, use, I will second that. I use Cyberstock. Go Cyberstock Terry over on uh, Twitter slash X because he is sharing some great stuff. There's some screenshots that you have, I know, up there of yep. stuff that kids are doing. Just, you know, again, how do we grow together as a community? So uh, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for sharing all that you're doing in your classroom and, and with your kids as we all try to figure this thing out. And what's the next step and where do we go from here? So I appreciate absolutely. Again, all of those links and everything that Terry mentioned, I'll make sure those are in the show notes. I have to go play with these because you just mentioned too that I didn't know were even here. Sweet. That's code.com uh, and then codebreakeredu.com uh, and look for the bite, B-I-T. Uh, B-Y-T. B-I-T. B-Y. Uh, oh, B-Y-T. Oh, of yeah. course. I should have known that, right? B-Y-T. Yeah. yeah, it's clever. Um, but I'll make sure that's over there in the show notes for everybody. So, Terry, thank yeah. you so much for getting up early in Vietnam today. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. Uh, thanks for hanging out and just having a quick chat about AI in the elementary classroom.